to our instructor and I have started recording. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Right. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. So again, welcome, everybody. Uh, today, we are going over some fun uh, decor ideas for uh, the parties that you'll be throwing this season, outdoor parties, whatever your party is, because we are celebrating National Mod Podge Month. So uh, Mod Podge Day, woohoo, it's a national holiday over here. <laughs> so so Mod Podge Day was May 14th, and um, we are celebrating all month long. So check out for the next couple of coming weeks. Um, we are talking all about Mod Podge here at Plaid Crafts um, with our Michaels Community Classroom classes. So we are super duper excited. Um, today, Jesse is continuing the fun with um, these really great uh, dinner party, whatever party decor ideas. So I think without further ado, are you ready, Jess? I'm ready. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Um, so like Emma said, my name is Jesse Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid. And if it's your first Plaid class here in the Michaels Community Classroom, welcome. Um, and if you're a returner, welcome again. Thanks for coming back. We're so excited you're here. Um, so like Emma said, we are celebrating Mod Podge Month all month long. Um, we love Mod Podge here at Plaid, of course. It's one of our favorite brands. There's so many things you can do with it, so many formulas to use. So um, today we're going to be going over so many awesome techniques that I'm really excited to share with you. So we're gonna be touching on lots of different um, ways to use Mod Podge, lots of creative ways to use it. So whether you are uh, hosting this year or whether you are having staycations with your household and still staying in, um, these are some really good ideas to kind of keep it festive um, and have a really bright and fun summer. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna kind of do each project at a time. We do have a good bit of supply. So hopefully you guys have all the supplies from the list or you can go ahead and get it, um, get inspired today and then get it later and craft along. Um, so we can go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to make are these really cute stars behind me. So you can see these paper stars. Um, they look kind of intense, like you may need to be like some sort of like paper folding or origami expert, but you actually don't. They're so, so super easy to do. Um, so the, what we're going to use to make them are these really awesome treat bags that I bought at Michael's. So these are just like kind of like the brown paper bag, but they're white. So we're going to use these to make them. And then of course, we're gonna need some um, tissue paper. So I've got my tissue paper here, and then we'll be using some Mod Podge gloss. So um, just some extra little items I have for doing this. Um, I have my little foam brushes here for applying my Mod Podge, but a brush works great. Whatever you've got for applying your Mod Podge is fine. Um, I've also got some wax paper. So whenever I am Mod Podging, I always like to have wax paper. A silicone mat is good too, or sometimes even parchment paper could be a good substitute. But my favorite thing to use with Mod Podge is wax paper because the Mod Podge won't stick to it. So it kind of helps with any messiness or if you're like laying it out on something, wax paper is a great choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually just gonna start by covering my area with a little bit of wax paper. Got a nice little sheet to kind of protect my workspace here. All right, so there we go, I've got my wax paper. And now I'm gonna start tearing up some of my tissue paper um, into smaller pieces. So you can use whatever kind of tissue paper you want. You can use metallics or bright colors, or, you know, this is even great for like holidays. I know we're not talking about that right now. It's a little bit early, but like this star can be used for summer, for Christmas, for fall, all times of year, depending on the colors you choose to use for your star. So of course we're excited for summer. So we're using really bright, fun summer colors. So that's what I have here today. So, um, so this is like, I, I always say this whenever I'm crafting a tissue paper, I have like my pretty tissue paper that I use for wrapping presents. And then I have my crafting tissue paper that's kind of a mess. And I always keep the scraps because I always wanna use them for crafting. So this is my crafting tissue paper. So the reason I say that is because of the way we're going to tear it. So I'm gonna get all my colors together. I've just picked this really cute, like little summery palette. I'm gonna make sure they're all lined up on one end. I've got a lot of stuff on my table here today, guys. I'm gonna make sure they're all lined up in one corner. So you can see here, I'm making sure all my colors are lined up there. And then I'm gonna start tearing. So I'm gonna start ripping them together randomly. So I kind of have a lot here. Here, I might need to get started with some scissors. I got a, a big stack here, um, but I'm just gonna start tearing pieces. And this just makes it easier to get all of those random sizes and shapes. And it's just so much quicker when you do it, um, all these pieces together, as opposed to trying to like cut out individual pieces or um, you know tear one color at a time. And again, I'm just kind of using my scissors to get it started so I can tear because I've got a lot of tissue paper. I'm just gonna tear a bunch of this. I wanna make sure I get all the colors so I have a nice variety to choose from when we go to start Mod Podging on our paper bags. 
That's a great tip to get it started with the scissors, Jess. I would have never thought about that. We have a lot here today. So maybe start with a smaller uh, pile than I'm doing, but I always like to tear it together just for ease, just because it's so much quicker than having to try to cut each one individually. Um, but yeah, so I'm just tearing pieces. They can be big or small. Um, I like to have like kind of a variety of shapes and sizes so I can have, you know, really interesting uh, patterns and shapes on my final project. But I think that's probably enough. You don't need a whole lot to do this. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. So I've got my little stack here. I'm going to kind of pull them apart so I, I can easily separate them and kind of pick and choose as I'm mod podging. You may even, if you want to tear them up more, it's totally up to you. So mine are folded. So I'm just going to tear those up. But you just want scraps. You want lots of little loose papers of random sized little pieces of bright colored tissue paper. That's what we want right here for this part. And Jess, Abigail in the chat said it's like mosaic tiles. Yeah, it is like mosaic tiles. So it's gonna be really fun. You can kind of already get an idea of where we're going with this and how much fun it's gonna be to Mod Podge these to our bags. So, so now, and again, guys, um, hopefully you guys are crafting along, but if not, if you're just getting inspiration, don't forget, you can go back and watch the recording. We're gonna be going a little bit quick today just because we have so many really fun techniques to share with you and I wanna make sure you guys get to see them all. Um, but don't forget, you can go back and watch this later on and pause and kind of you know work out and craft at your own pace. So just don't forget that. Okay, so I have my white paper bags here. So I'm gonna start um, on the side that doesn't have the bottom on it. So it might have bottoms. Um, you can also use the kind that like isn't boxy, but is more of like a pouch. Like it's only two-sided, if that makes sense. You know what I'm talking about, Emma? Yeah. Those work well too. So if you have those, that's fine. You just will kind of pretend like you don't have the sides. Um, we are actually gonna hot glue this at the end of the class when our Mod Podge is dry. And we're gonna pin that down anyway. So either way, either kind of bag works great. So I'm gonna start on the other side just because it's easier. I'm gonna open up my Mod Podge gloss. I'm going to grab my brush and start applying Mod Podge to my bag. And so Jess, is the gloss Mod Podge an important component to this or could you use like any finish of our original Mod Podge formula? Matte or satin, um, this kind of thing, it's kind of just like a very classic decoupage sort of situation. We're just doing paper to paper. So um, I love the original formula of Mod Podge, which is just, you know, our original standard classic Mod Podge which again, like Emma said, we have matte, satin, and gloss. It's totally your preference. I like gloss just because I like the shiny finish. Matte or satin will also work great. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna be putting my papers on and then I'm gonna kind of go back with another coat and smooth them down. And you need just enough so it sticks down. Do a little bit at a time. And you can you know, overlap your papers. but we wanna do a few of these bags. So I'm gonna continue Mod Podging these. And again, I'm just doing a little bit of time so my Mod Podge isn't dry before I get to the section, you know? Totally. Mod Podge can dry. And I'm just doing a thin coat. You don't need to do any more than it takes to just stick the tissue paper down, which is, you know, it's really thin. So it sticks nice and easily. Just wanna make sure you only have one piece at a time. You don't want it to have doubled up because then you could end up getting wrinkles and bubbles later on if you got two pieces by accident and that's not really what we want. I'm gonna grab some of this bright blue, but you can be so creative with this. You can use napkins for this. Um, you can do, you know, kind of like a monochrome sort of tissue paper and do like pinks and reds or like, you know, different blues would be really pretty or do like all kinds of colors like we're kind of doing here. Um, it's just kind of up to your imagination. And Jesse, this is a really great craft for younger kids too. I mean, it's a totally safe craft. You don't have to use scissors. It's tearing and, and mod podging, which kids love. And then maybe an adult can step in for the hot glue part at the end. Yeah, and we have a really great product that actually Michaels does carry and it's called Mod Podge a Kids Washout. And what that does is it's really great for kids because it washes out of their clothes. So normally Mod Podge, our regular formulas are permanent. They're non-toxic and they're water-based, but they are permanent. So, you know, of course you can always make a mess with anything that's permanent that you're crafting with. Um, but our Mod Podge kids washout um, does wash out of their clothes. So, you know, if they accidentally like dump Mod Podge in their lap or something, which you guys know if you're crafting with kids is definitely likely, um, it just washes right out of your clothes. So it's great for paper, you know, it'll definitely hold up for this sort of thing, but it won't, it won't make a big mess for your kiddos. Yeah, and so Jess, we do have a question. Okay. So Abigail was wondering, could you use thin cotton fabric? And if so, would you need to switch up the Mod Podge formula? Um, yeah, you totally could use cotton fabric. 
So, you know, you can always use fabric Mod Podge just because like, of course you're like, oh, I'm using fabric. Maybe I should use fabric Mod Podge. But I kind of feel like you really only need fabric Mod Podge when you're doing like fabric to fabric. If it's still gonna be something like this, that's paper where, you know, it's a little bit temporary to a degree. Um, you're obviously not gonna be washing this or cleaning it. Um, I still say you can go ahead and just use the classic, one of the classic Mod Podge formulas if you're doing it to paper, you know? Um, I think the regular Mod Podge formula will be just fine. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so we need to do a bunch of these bags, guys. I'm gonna try to do six, but of course I don't, I know you guys don't wanna sit here and watch me Mod Podge bags for the whole class because <laughs> we have so many good things to go over. So we, I may leave some blank and then just show you how to assemble at the end. But of course you're gonna wanna um, Mod Podge papers to all of your bags. So they're all nice and colorful. And, and I'm best. Oh, yeah. sorry. Before we move on, someone else had a question too. They wanted to know, could you use cardstock paper? Yeah, you could. Um, I like the tissue paper because you get kind of like this overlappy, like like almost like watery watercolor look. You see how they kind of overlap and they kind of blend together and they're really soft. Um, but you could use cardstock for sure. I don't see why not. And Jesse, I have a question. Sure. Um, so, so if you were doing this in real life and we had all the time in the world, would you add tissue paper to the other side of that bag or just the front side? I was going to say that. So of course, um, again, guys, this is a, this is a quick and easy craft, but there always is going to be drying time whenever you're working with Mod Podge. So, um, I'm not going to make you guys wait for this all to dry. It'll, it, it'll dry fairly quickly. Actually. I think by the end of the class, we'll be able to assemble these ones that I'm doing now. Um, but again, I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me Mod Podge all of these bags and let them dry and then Mod Podge all of the backs. That would, that would be way too long for this. Um, so yes, yeah, so we would want to let this dry and then turn it over and also Mod Podge the back. You want to have both sides have color and that's just going to make your paper star when you're finished that much more colorful. You want to have lots of color on it. So that was a really good point, Anna. Thanks for asking. Okay, so I'm going to finish up this guy here. Um, and I'm kind of not paying attention to the top. We can always trim it off the edges. So you can kind of see I'm going off the edges a bunch. That's fine. We can always uh, trim it when it is dry later on. So that's easy to do. Okay. All right. So you guys see we have our two bags here. Make sure I've got all my Mod Podge smoothed out so it'll dry nice and quick. I don't want to have it kind of globbed on there. And we're going to set these aside. Okay. Again, if you're making a full paper star, you want to Mod Podge all of your bags that you're going to use. Um, so I would say, depending on how big you want your star and how dense you want it to be, I would have at least six or eight bags. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set these aside to dry. And then we'll come back to these and assemble at the end of the class here. So I'm going to set them down here. Okay, guys. All right. I'm going to set all this aside. We're done with these for now. Um, I always like to hang on to these because I always like using um, tissue paper and like doing this sort of look with like the all the different colors and you know overlapping. So I'm gonna hang on to those and keep those in my craft stash for sure. And just real quick before you move on with that gloss, someone wanted to see the bottle up close a little bit. Sure. So yeah. this is just my project gloss. So this is our original formula and the sheen of it is gloss. So you can find this on Michael's um, in store or on michaels.com. And this is the eight ounce. This is kind of like our classic Mod Podge. Like this is like the original Mod Podge formula. Okay, so um, I am going to move on to our next project. Uh, and the next project we're going to talk about are these really cute little tea lights. So I just have like little battery operated candles in here, but look how cute these are. Like they're so simple to do. Um, you can see like they're, they're nice and stiff, but they're not too stiff. They're perfect for outdoor parties. Um, all you need is Mod Podge Ultra um, and tissue paper to make it. I'm going to show you a little bit of a technique um, that I did to help shape these. So shape them. I said in our supply list that you need a mason jar or a cup that's similarly shaped. So I'll kind of show you why. I have this like old beat up mason jar that I use for stuff like this. Like when I'm like shaping something where I, I trace the mouth a lot, I kind of just keep it around. It's got some paint on it, you can see. Um, but I like to use this for like, you know, uh, shapes and things like that. So you can see here, this we fit this perfectly on this mason jar. That's how I made this. I did it by shaping it around this mason jar. So I'll show you how I did that. So, so cute. thanks. Um, so we're gonna grab some of our wax paper. I just need a little bit. And like I said before, Mod Podge doesn't stick to wax paper. So that's why I always like to have it um, when I'm crafting with Mod Podge. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've got my mason jar upside down. Do you guys see that? 
and I'm gonna put my wax paper over it and I'm gonna press it down so it's covering my mason jar. And then you can take some of your yarn um, from the supply list and tie it around there, or even easier is a rubber band. So if you have a rubber band nearby or like a hair tie even, I, I always use hair ties instead of rubber bands um, just because I always have them around. Um, but just something to kind of keep that around your mason jar. And I'm just gonna trim off the excess just so it's not in my way. Um, but you just want it to be covering the majority of your mason jar. So you guys see what I did there? Yeah, that makes sense. And this is just the shape, like this is not the craft, this is what we're going to use to shape our little um, cute little tea light holders here. So now I'm going to grab some more of my tissue paper and I'm going to do like some, like a little bit of a pink color, I think. I'm going to grab some tissue paper, I and mean, this one I'm not going to tear it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it. I want a couple sheets and you just need enough, you know, kind of eyeball it, like how much are we going to need to cover that. So I'm going to do a big square here, I'm going to do a couple of sheets. I've got two here, so that's probably good. I'm going to cut out a big square of this. I always like to kind of overestimate how much I need so I don't run out. That's the right thing about tissue paper is when you buy a pack of it, which Michaels has a great selection of tissue paper, you get like a thousand sheets. <laughs> so you never have to worry about um, like running out or using too much of it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we want to make sure we have enough to cover it. So I've got plenty here to cover my mason jar. And then we're going to trim it later when it hardens. So don't worry about that. Um, so I'm going to cover it there and I'm going to grab my Mod Podge Ultra. So Mod Podge Ultra, in case you are unfamiliar, is one of our newer formulas in the Mod Podge family. And the great thing about it is that it is a spray. As you can see here, um, it's got this pump to it. So it's a spray formula. So it's awesome. Um, it's an all-in-one uh, glue sealer and adhesive. So you can adhere like 3D objects with this, but um, also it stiffens. So if you guys are familiar with Stiffy, which is another great Mod Podge formula. This also stiffens like fabric or paper or yarn as we're gonna, I'm gonna show you actually next. Um, but it's a really great formula. Also, there's no brush strokes. It's non tacky. There's so many great uh, uses for Mod Podge Ultra. So this is the matte formula. So you can use matte or gloss, again, up to you. I like like the matte look of the uh, tissue paper. So I chose matte. So I have my cap off. I always wanna prime my pump. So to prime it, you just want to make sure that it's like spraying nice. I'm going to just spray my, I have a trash can right here. I'm going to spray, make sure it's flowing. It's misting nice and evenly. Yes. Abigail wanted to know, does it have an odor? Should it be used in an open area? Oh, great. Great question. No, it does not. It just like the rest of our Mod Podge, uh, like formulas, it is um, water-based and non-toxic. So you can use it inside. You can get it on your hands. It, it doesn't smell like anything. It smells like Mod Podge, if anything, which I love that smell. Um, but yes, it is completely non-toxic. You can totally use it inside. It's not like an aerosol, like where it's like smelly or something like that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spritz my mason jar with the wax paper. And again, I still have my wax paper down because there's gonna be lots of extra spray. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to spritz my mason jar, get a nice coat of Mod Podge Ultra on it. And then I've got my tissue paper that we've already shaped to it. And I'm going to put that on there. And now it'll stick pretty nicely. Not, it won't stick super well, but it will stick a little bit. And I'm going to spray it again. So I want to spray it and make sure that my tissue paper is saturated. It's, it might get a little drippy, but it's okay. If it's looking like a little bit cloudy, um, don't like don't worry just like the rest of our mod podge formulas it will dry clear so if it looks like it's like a little bit milky that's just because it's wet when it dries it'll be totally clear so i'm just going to spray this make sure i have it nice and saturated you see i'm being really generous with my my mod podge ultra yeah hey and jess while you're doing that we had a great question from a little bit ago going back to the um origami star project yeah someone wanted to know do you need to use an even number of bags or or does it matter um, no, it doesn't matter. You can use, I said six or eight, seven is good too. Okay. <laughs> you should have, you have enough to wrap around and reach each other and get that full star shape. That's what's important about that. So it doesn't matter how many, as long as you have, like I have six here today and that should be good on these. I, I definitely used more. I used like 10 or 12, maybe to get that like really busy, like full, you know, star shape, but, um, just enough so that when you try, when we go to open it later, which you'll see what I mean later on when I keep saying open it, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but You'll see at the end of the class when we assemble it that you just need, you need a good amount. Like I would say 10 is really even safe, you know? Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my nice wet tissue paper. I'm gonna grab one of my sponge brushes and just kind of like work it in there and just make sure that it's totally saturated. I don't want any of it to be dry. I even want that 
Remember I did two layers. You want that bottom layer to be dry. I just want the whole thing to be wet with Mod Podge Ultra because that's what's going to stiffen it. If it doesn't have the Mod Podge Ultra on it, it is not going to stiffen. And be gentle because, you know, it's wet tissue paper, so it will break. You don't want to be rough with it, but I'm just kind of like working it in there, making sure it's totally saturated with Mod Podge Ultra. You can even, again, you can even touch it because just like I said, it is uh, non-toxic and water-based. So if it gets on your hands, just clean them after with warm soap and water. So it's nice and shaped there. So you can see here, it's a nice and shaped, you can see the blue coming through. That's my mason jar, but nice and shaped to our mason jar. So I would let this dry overnight. So at least several hours, I think overnight is safest. Um, but you want to make sure it is nice and stiff before you remove it. So later on, when that was nice and stiff, what I would do is I'll just kind of uh, show you what would happen. So it, say it was like this. I would go ahead and I would carefully remove it with the wax paper. I would pull my wax paper out. And then all I did is I took some scissors and I scalloped the edges to get a nice clean edge. So you can do zigzags or you could do a, a clean cut if you wanted to. But I just thought it kind of looked like a pretty little flower here. So I just took some scissors and just went like this around my edges and cut off that excess. And you can hear it's nice and stiff. It almost reminds me of like a pinata or something like paper mache kind of. Um, but it's just so sweet to have like a little, you know, uh, candles in there. And it's a little bit transparent because it's just thin tissue paper. So imagine those little flames just glowing in there. It would be so colorful and beautiful. So Again, just like super duper easy. You can do this with fabric too. Someone asked about fabric, you can stiffen fabric and do it in this exact same technique. So, so many different ways to do this, but just a sweet little idea for, for table decor. And so Jess, can I stop you real quick to ask you a couple questions? Yeah, please do always interrupt me. I wanna answer the questions. <laughs> okay. So someone wanted to know, could they use classic Mod Podge instead of our Mod Podge Ultra for that last craft? You know, that's a really good question. Um, our classic Mod Podge stays a little bit flexible. That's why I like Mod Podge Ultra for this because it dries hard. Or like I said, our classic Mod Podge, it's not like super flexible where you can put it on like clothing and stuff. Like it, it will crack if you try to bend it. Um, but it's not it's not like rock hard like Mod Podge Ultra dries. That's why I prefer that for this. Um, but you could totally try it. Like I said, Mod Podge Stiffy works, works really well for this and you got some of that at home. Um, but I mean, it wouldn't not work with Mod Podge like regular, it just I right. think would work well with the ultra. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Follow up question. Someone wanted to know how many layers is ideal of tissue um, paper. I did two. Yeah, I did two. So you can see here, I did like an orange and then a yellow. Um, I did two layers. It's kind of up to you. You can make it thicker if you wanted to. I would, I wouldn't do one that might be a little bit too thin. Um, but again, it's, it's kind of up to you depending on how, how thick you want yours to be. Okay, and then final question, um, outside of the crafts we're working on today, someone just had a general Mod Podge question, which we love. It is National Mod Podge Month. Um, someone wanted to know, out of this class, is there any Mod Podge to use on leather for like a leather shoe? That is a great question. Um, gosh, I don't know. I I'm thinking, say oh, sorry. I keep interrupting you. I'm thinking if there's any um, good product to use in our FX line at Michael's. Um, so like, I guess I'm wondering like what, if what they're doing, are they trying to paint on it? We don't have a, like a, yeah. so let us know if you want to seal your shoe, if you want to paint on your shoe. Um, we have a great cosplay, cosplay paint at Michael's called uh, plaid FX, and it is uh, flexible on leather. It's flexible on a variety of different substrates. So FX would work great if you're wanting to paint on leather. So let us, let us know what you mean by that. Yeah, definitely. And I would say go with one of our, if you were going to use Mod Podge, I would say go with one of our um, formulas that is water resistant. So we have a few formulas that are water resistant. Mod Podge Ultra is one of them. Um, Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe is one of them because of course it can go on the dishwasher. So make sure it's one of the formulas that resists water because of course, if you're wearing your shoes, they're getting a lot of wear and tear and you know, you might be walking in the rain. You don't want to ruin whatever it is that you've done on your shoes. So um, I would definitely go with one of those formulas if, if you're planning on Mod Podging onto your shoes. Yeah, great answer. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, so now we're going to move on to this really fun charger that I did. So um, this is like, a, we did a lot of layering here. So this is just a couple of cute plates that we had laying around that match this decor. Um, but the piece we're going to be crafting today is this really fun plate that we made out of yarn. Basically, it's this really cute charger. So we are going to craft this so you can see how cute it looks all layered with this um, clear glass plate and the smaller one, like 
just it would be cute for Easter. It's cute for summer. Again, you can do this um, for Christmas and use, you know, red yarn and things like that. So many different applications for this, but it's a really fun technique that I'm going to show you guys. So now we already know that Mod Podge Ultra can stiffen fabric, um, but it can also stiffen yarn. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that. I'm going to start by grabbing a big uh, strand of yarn. I'm trying to think maybe like an arm's length of yarn. We'll do We'll start with that. And I'm going to, I have wax paper down, very important. Make sure you have wax paper down for this. It should be a silicone mat or wax paper because we do not want it to stick to it. So I'm going to lay my yarn down. I've got my Mod Podge Ultra still. I'm using matte, but you can use gloss. That works too. I'm going to spray my yarn. I want it to be totally saturated. So I'm spraying, 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 making sure my yarn is nice and wet. Um, I have also done it where I'll like pour a little, I'll open it up and pour a little bit of Mod Podge Ultra into a dish and I'll dip my yarn in it to get it really soaked. So that works too. It's a little bit messier as you can imagine, but um, it's, it works great. So I'm making sure my yarn is nice and wet. And Jess, while you're spraying that, Lorraine had a great question, a great Mod Podge Month question. Okay. Um, she wanted to know, um, hi, instead of firing um, ceramics, can I use Mod Podge to make it shiny and what kind of works best? Um, yes, you can totally use it to make it shiny. So depending on what kind of ceramics you're making, uh, it is important to note that Mod Podge is not food safe. So if you're doing plates or bowls or something you're going to eat off of, um, if that's the kind of ceramics you're doing, I would not recommend these formulas we have here today. I would recommend Mod Podge resin. So we have a brand new product in the Mod Podge line that is Mod Podge resin. And that is the only Mod Podge formula that is food safe, that is safe to eat food off of. So like I said, these are um, water-based and non-toxic, but they are not certified food safe. So we use these on um, tumblers and things like that, but we never put the Mod Podge where our food is going to touch or our mouth is going to touch. So if we were to say we're gonna do this mason jar and use it as a glass, I would Mod Podge all the way up to the rim and where my mouth will touch, I will not put Mod Podge and of course not inside of it. So just something to keep in mind. Um, but if you're just for decorative purposes, any of them will be great. The original formula is great. Mod Podge Ultra would be great for that. Um, any of our any of our gloss finishes really would be great for that. And some of our aerosols too. Yeah, we have some gloss aerosols. So those you want do want to use outside. Those are like classic yeah. aerosols, They're kind of smelly, but they're really durable and they have a really great shine to them. So another great option. Okay, so I'm stiffening my yarn. And again, you don't forget, you can touch it. I'm gonna just, I'll get it on my hands, but I'll just wash it when I'm done. I'm going to start overlapping it all over each other in like a crazy zigzag pattern. So I'm gonna keep adding strands and I'm just working like one piece at a time just because it's more manageable. You don't have to do it one piece at a time. It's just easier in my opinion. So I'm gonna continue making sure all of my strands are totally saturated. If they're not totally saturated, um, it's not gonna be as stiffened and it may, it may kind of wanna fall apart a little bit when you go to um, use it later on. You wanna make sure they're totally saturated and Mod Podge. And I'm gonna continue making sure I have this nice random funky pattern. It's important to overlap them because if they're not overlapped, that's where they're gonna like bond together and like harden and create that sheet. Um, so if they're not overlapping, you're going to have a lot of loose areas and it's going to kind of flop when you go to take it off later. It's going to be kind of flimsy and floppy. So make sure there's lots of overlapping going on when you're kind of creating this um, funky web pattern. I love this one so much, Jess. There was that big trend a little while ago. People called it yarn painting, and it's just basically yeah. exactly what you're doing. And they would and they would attach their yarn like that to canvases, and they would look like really cool, funky patterns, and they would be really pretty pieces of wall art. And Mod Podge Ultra is a great product to use to create those kind of designs. Yeah, because like I said, it's going to stiffen it. Um, it's also great for adhering. So all these yarn strands are going to adhere together um, for a nice, strong, like sheet of yarn, basically. I, I held that one up. I'll hold it up again when I'm done with this. Um, but we're going to let this dry overnight until it gets nice and hard and stiff. And this is just another really fun, creative way to use this Mod Podge Ultra that I know you guys are all going to run out and buy now because there's about a million things you can do with it. So it's just one more idea to add to your, your arsenal of crafting ideas uh, with Mod Podge. <laughs> Okay, so again, I want to make sure it's nice and overlapped. And I would continue to do this as big as you want it, just keeping in mind the size that you want your charger to be. So you can use it for charger, you can use it for, you know, placemats, whatever it is that you want to um, use this for. But like I said, so tomorrow it'll be nice and hard and you'll pull it carefully, carefully off your wax paper. And if there's a little bit of 
threads to do that stride, that's okay. You'll just go ahead and remove those with your fingers. Um, Cause sometimes, especially if you have like a lot of Mod Podge Ultra on there, it will have, it will build up and have a little bit of residue, but it comes off easily once it's dry. So I just took a plate and I, I cut all around it to get that nice circular shape. And you can see you have this really cute um, accent piece for my, for my party decor, for my, my table setting. Isn't that so fun? That is super fun, Jess. I love that project. Super, super easy to do. You can do all kinds of colors. You could do rainbow colors. Like there's a million things you can, you can do with this, this technique. So super easy. All right. I'm going to let this dry as well. Let's set this to my side. Um, and I am going to get a fresh uh, sheet of wax paper now because I got that one super wet. So we want it to dry on there. We want it to harden on that wax paper so it doesn't stick. So I'm going to grab some new wax paper. We're kind of flying through these. These are going faster than I thought they would. Yeah. Great. We're going to go over today. Okay. So now this is another one of my very favorite um, techniques that we'll be learning today. And it's probably the easiest one. It's so simple. And, you know, it's something that you're like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Or maybe you have thought of it. Um, but we are going to be creating these really beautiful, I'll move them here so you can see them, um, candlesticks. So how beautiful are these colored glass, like, I'm seeing, we've been seeing colored glass everywhere. So colored glass is so trendy, especially like those vintage colors, um, kind of like Moroccan feel, like the amber glass, all of those things I've been seeing ever, like beautiful table settings and weddings and all kinds of beautiful stuff. So um, I'm gonna show you how to just take regular glass. This is a regular candlestick, just you know, clear glass that I bought at Michael's. I'm gonna show you how to tint it using Mod Podge. I'm gonna set these aside again, but like how beautiful, like think of all the different color combinations you can oh my do. My gosh, yes. Even for weddings, Jess, this is a really inexpensive way to get pieces that look like real stained glass. Go to Michael's um, and get some of their candlesticks, go to, you know, the thrift store and get thrifted candlesticks. And then you don't have to worry about collecting all that colored glass. You can just color it yourself if that's the look you're going for. And Super really, cool. yeah. And really like create it around the colors that you've chosen. You can totally pick your own colors. You don't have to worry about finding like all blues or whatever. Like just make it blue yourself. So easy. Um, okay. So I've got a little plate here. Whatever it is that you like to like put your paint and Mod Podge on is fine. I've got a little paper plate. Um, so I guess I'll do, I'll do pink today. So right here I've got, um, I will let you know, these ones are teal. I just showed you. I've got teal, sunny yellow, and pumpkin were those colors. Um, and then I also have Parisian pink. So I'm just going to show you. It's the same technique for all the colors, but I'm gonna do pink today. So just a little bit of paint, not a ton. And I've got, got my Mod Podge gloss again. Um, so I like the gloss for this particular project because I want it to stay shiny. I like the shiny glass look. So I want it to look like it's colored glass. If I use matte, it would still be pretty, but just keep in mind your project would be matte. You'd have that matte glass look instead. So up to you. I'm gonna pour some Mod Podge onto my plate. And you definitely want more Mod Podge than paint because we're just tinting the Mod Podge. We want it to stay translucent. Um, if we add too much paint, it's gonna, our paint is uh, really opaque. Our, like the folk art paint I have here is really good coverage. So if you add too much paint, you're not gonna see that clear glass coming through, which is what we want. We just wanna tint it. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that pink on my brush. I've got, just got a little foam brush and I'm gonna mix it in to my Mod Podge. I want to get it nice and combined. And Jess, someone had a great question. Does it have to be on glass or can you put this on clear plastic? Oh yeah, it can be plastic. That's a great idea. Yeah, totally. Like go some of those plastic, plastic bottles. I said plastic. <laughs> wow, that's a great idea. You know what would also be so cute? Mason jars. Like they have Ooh. plastic mason jars. That would be cute too. And put some like luminary candles in there for a table. That would be so cute. So cute. And Jess, while you're mixing that up, we had a question from earlier when we were talking about Mod Podge dishwasher safe. Uh -huh. Lorraine wanted to know, oh, was it Lorraine? Uh, might have not been Lorraine, but somebody wanted to know, um, Jay, is Mod Podge dishwasher safe? Uh, uh, is Mod Podge dishwasher safe safe for hot drinks? Um, yes, it's safe to go in your dishwasher. It's safe yeah. top rack. So um, yes, you can use it on mugs and tumblers because you know, if you think about it, your dishwasher gets pretty darn hot when you're washing it, like it really steams those dishes. So yes, it's safe in your dishwasher. It should be safe with your hot drinks. I wouldn't put it in the microwave. Definitely don't put it in the microwave or the oven, um, but dishwasher and, you know, hot drink safe. Yes. Totally. And we had a question earlier. I answered it in the chat, but we had a question about the folk art paint. They wanted to know if it was oil-based. Um, folk art acrylic paint is our favorite acrylic paint and it is water-based. So all the products we're using today, the Mod Podge and the folk art, they're all water-based, non-toxic. Yeah. 
Um, and you know, there's always a time and place for using like the, the more toxic or oil-based or solvent-based products. There's definitely always a, a time and place for that. But most of the crafting we do here is, is non-toxic. All right, guys. So you can see I added a little more pink as I went. You want that like the pale version of whatever color you're doing. You don't want it to be the exact same color. That means you've added way too much paint. The pale color, um, you, you're getting that milky Mod Podge color showing through. And that's how we know there's still a lot of Mod Podge uh, in our mixture. And that all that milkiness is going to turn clear, just like Mod Podge always does. So I've got my sponge brush here. I like to use a sponge brush for painting glass. You can definitely use a paintbrush, um, but I like just, I think it's easier to get even coverage. You, you don't have to worry so much about brush strokes when you're using a sponge brush. So I'm gonna do a dabbing motion. Oh, and we may need to add more pink. I think we're good. Um, so I'm gonna do a dabbing motion. I'm applying it to my glass here. And don't forget guys, if it's going on really milky, that milkiness will go away. Once the Mod Podge starts drying, um, you'll just see that clear pink, um, but the milkiness will all dry clear, just like Mod Podge always does. All of our Mod Podge formulas always go on milky, but they always dry clear. Absolutely. I'm gonna get all the glass areas and I'm just dabbing, 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 picking up more as I need it. And again, I like the dabbing motion. Um, you can definitely, I'll show you some differences. This one is one that I dabbed and there's a little bit of texture there if you guys can see it, but that doesn't bother me, but it's nice and even and smooth. Whereas this one I brushed on and um, you don't have that texture, but sometimes you get brush strokes. So it's just kind of up to you. It's kind of up to what you like. I like the even coverage. I don't mind the texture. It's kind of what whatever you prefer, whatever look you're going for. Yeah, and Jess, while you're dabbing on and finishing that up, someone had a great question. Um, is the paint that we're using multi-surface? So this one isn't, and that's because the Mod Podge is multi-surface, and so we're adding just regular folk art acrylic paint to this. But if you were like just applying one of our folk art paints to glass, we would recommend using either folk art multi-surface or folk art enamel paints, and those are both available at Michaels. But there's really no need to use the multi-surface today because we are are mixing it with that multi-surface Mod Podge. Exactly, great answer, Emma. So we don't need the multi-surface, like she said, because we are just looking for the pigment. We're just kind of like borrowing that pink pigment from the paint. The bulk of what we're applying to our glass right now is Mod Podge. And then that, and then that, that is multi-surface. Totally, and another great question, DP wanted to know, does the shade become darker or lighter or does it stay the same shade once it's dry? Um, so it will become maybe even a little bit lighter. It's hard to say. So right now it looks really pastel-y, like I said. I guess it's kind of bright on the camera. In person, it looks pastel -y, And that's because we have that milky white Mod Podge mixed in with the pink. Um, so that's what's making it look kind of pale. But once it's um, dry, I'll show you here on my pink one again. Once it's dry, you're going to get that bright pink back. And all of that milkiness is going to turn clear. So you guys can see how you can still see through that. The pink turned back to bright, which is like the pigment of the of the paint, um, and all that milkiness went away. So we have this nice, clear, uh, transparent, like tinted glass. And so we had a question um, wanting to know if Mod Podge resin is toxic. So with all um, epoxy resins, you should be uh, practicing proper PPE, which includes wearing a certain respirator that the company um, recommends for you to use, working in a well-ventilated area. Um, and we have some great safety info on how the best way to use Mod Podge resin to keep you um, and whoever's with you safe when you're using the product on platonline.com. And you know the certain webpage they can go directly to, Jess, so I can just pop it in the chat for our safety. Cloudonline.com slash Mod Podge resin. Um, and since we're talking about resin, we are so excited about it here. Like we love resin. A couple months ago on the um, Michael's Community Classroom page, we did a whole month's worth of um, resin videos. So make sure, just like Kelly was saying in the beginning, go to um, the Michael store uh, uh, YouTube page and all those classes are on there. So you can go check those out. Emma and I did a series of resin classes telling you guys all about all the safety you need, showing you the different things you can do with Mod Podge resin. So of course, it's available at Michael's in store or online. So make sure to go to the Michael's um, store's YouTube channel to find those classes if you want to know a little bit more about it. And I'm just placing just our um, our great safety info and some frequently asked questions about Mod Podge resin in the chat for you all to look at before you get started with um, Mod Podge resin available at Michael's. Yeah. 
like Emma said, with any resin, not just Mod Podge resin, you want to make sure you're being safe. You want to wear the proper PPE, like I said, um, gloves, respirator, work in a well-ventilated area, all of that. So um, totally. everybody's crafting safely and smartly um, just because you can, I mean, resin's amazing. You can do some really incredible things with it. So it's definitely worth it to, you know, look into it and know the correct safety, but you just always want to be safe. Absolutely. Okay, so you guys can see I'm just, I would just cover this whole thing. You can do as many candlesticks as you want. You can do different colors, um, I, but I would cover the entire thing and you get this really beautiful tinted glass look, which is so, so super trendy, especially for parties. Mm -hmm. um, and a, another great idea is if you were to leave this outside, you could do um, use Mod Podge Outdoor instead of Mod Podge Glass. So use Mod Podge Outdoor and then just tint that. And then you can leave this out. If you're gonna put it on like your patio or something, you could leave this out all summer and it will be um, protected from um, UV and from the elements. Okay, and so we had a question. Um, someone wanted to know, could they um, ask, um, is there a way to contact us to ask us any Mod Podge or folk art paint related questions? So we do a lot of Michael's community classroom classes and we're always so thrilled to answer your questions and get to chat with you. So make sure to stay tuned for our future plaid crafts um, and Michael's classes here on Michael's community classroom. And I'll go ahead and drop a link in the chat how you can contact our customer service team um, in case you wanted to speak with any of those lovely people there. But of course, um, we will always um, you know, we will continue to be doing these classes and we're always so thrilled to answer your questions. Yeah, great, Emma. Also, definitely, our customer service ladies are literally so nice. If you ever have questions, feel free to call them. Like, they're the, some of the nicest people. Totally. Um, but also, follow us on Instagram. Um, you can find us on our Facebook page, our Plaidcrafts Facebook, where we have tons more inspiration and content um, using Mod Podge and all the rest of our products. And you can comment on those, direct message us. We'd love to hear from you guys. Um, but yeah, we, we love answering your questions. We love that you guys are using our products and loving our products. We want to make sure you guys are as successful as you can be. Totally. And just like Kelly said at the beginning of the class, if you guys decide to make any of these projects at home, make sure to hashtag um, make it with my goals and also hashtag plaid crafts. We're always looking under the hashtag plaid crafts. We love to see what you guys are up to. And we're not just kidding when we say we really do look up that hashtag to see what you guys are crafting at home. And it's one of the best part of parts about our job. So and we can't my crafts if you're posting. Right, we can't tell you how many times a day customer service or um, our social media manager calls the content student and is like, hey, like someone's asking this about Mod Podge or hey, someone's asking this about folk art. So chances are you'll be getting the answer from us anyway if you contact one, yeah. of, those, one of those routes. Well, yes, great idea, Emma, great options. Um, okay, so we've got about 15 minutes left, which is awesome because um, all that's left to do is assemble our star. So um, my, you can see it dried pretty quick. It's a little bit damp. So, you know, in real life, I would recommend that you really let it dry completely. You don't want it to be wet at all when you go to assemble it, just because it'll make it that much stronger. So again, just because I want to make sure you guys can understand how to assemble it. Mine is a little bit damp, but make sure yours isn't when you assemble. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to trim off the excess tissue paper that I, I left hanging over the edges. Um, and, oh, sorry, pretty quick. Um, and you would want to make sure that you tissue paper all of your bags. I'm going to do some blank bags just for the sake of showing you guys how to assemble the star. But you would want both sides of all of your bags that you're using um, Mod Podged with tissue paper. But again, I'm using some blank ones just because I want you guys to see how to do it. What were you going to say, Mom? Sorry, I was just saying um, we have an interesting question and I hope I'm understanding it correctly. Rachel wants to know, can you use Mod Podge? I guess the tinted Mod Podge that we just showed, can you use that technique through a stencil on your dinner plates? Um, yeah, you just have to keep in mind that um, if you're looking for like, so maybe you're like thinking of this one, this is just some folk art that we added. Um, it'll be sort of transparent. It, you won't get that like pretty full opaque coverage. You just want to use like, you know, straight paint for that. Um, but I mean, yeah, if you wanted to have that like nice transparent look, you could totally, it'll be like almost like watercolory. You can totally use it. Okay, I'll let you continue. <laughs> it's no problem. I love answering your questions. Okay, so I've got my bags here. They're just standard size treat bags um, and they're in the link for, so for this class, they're in the link for um, the description. I think, I think I actually have here what they were exactly called. 
Um, they are celebrated brand. So um, the celebrated brand from Michaels, they have really great like treat bags and party decor and all kinds of stuff. So um, I got these at Michaels, again, just kind of like standard treat bag size. And I also have a hot glue gun here, which was part of the um, uh, supply listing. So um, I have a high, high temperature one. I kind of recommend a low temp glue gun for this, but um, just because we're going to be like pressing on it and stuff and it's just safer and it, it cools more quickly so you can do it faster. Um, but I do have a high temp here today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I said before, remember I said I want to tack these down, these flaps that are on the back, which becomes the bottom of the bag if you're opening it. I want to tack those down because I don't want that flopping around. We just don't really need it for this. So I'm just going to put a dab of hot glue, just a tiny bit and make sure those are stuck down before we start assembling our star. So I'm gonna tack this one down. And Jess, while you're tacking all those down, we have a few more questions. Okay, cool. Someone wanted to know, could you use a hair dryer to uh, speeden up the process of getting Mod Podge to dry? You totally can. Um, I would recommend using the cool setting. Um, and if you've got like a really thick application of Mod Podge, what can happen if you try to, if you try to uh, cheat and force it sometimes is that you'll end up drying just the top layer of the Mod Podge and it'll kind of create a skin that seals the layer underneath and it, it just takes longer to dry, if that makes sense. You kind of end up sealing your Mod Podge, like making it airtight so, so the under layer doesn't want to dry. So I, I always think that it's better with Mod Podge to just let it dry, you know, in real time, just let it take its time to dry. But like I said, if you have a very thin application, you can definitely hit it, like stick it in front of a fan or hit it with a cool hair dryer, and that will dry it more quickly. Okay, so you can see here why I recommend the low temp because I have the hot glue and the paper, of course, is over it. I'm not touching the hot glue, of course, um, but it's still pretty. It's still pretty warm to the touch, so it might be better off using a a low temp glue gun. I'm just making sure all of those are pinned down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I have my stack of bags here. I'm gonna, I guess I'll start with my, uh, my Mod Podge ones. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my bag and I'm going to um, hot glue a T on it. So it's kind of an upside down T. I'm gonna do a big line of hot glue here and then a big line of hot glue going down the center. So down the center and across the bottom. And I'm working quick because hot glue, as we all know, likes to cool quick. Mm -hmm. So I have my T there. Can you guys see that? Yes. And then right away, I'm taking my other, and in the same orientation, I'm pressing my next bag on, and I'm pressing it down, making and so, sure that T is adhered. So the top of the T is going on the opposite side of the bag opening. All right. So the bag opening is still on the top. We have our bag just sitting up the way, like the, the right way, like the top of the top, the bottom is the bottom. So you want your upside down T, line in the middle and a line at the bottom. Great. And then taking the next bag on top. And you're gonna continue doing that. So my line in the middle going down and my line at the bottom, we're gonna continue doing this until we have stacked neatly all of our bags. And again, make sure you Mod Podge all your bags. I'm just kind of cheating a little bit so I can show you guys how to assemble your star but I'm gonna continue doing this. So a line down the middle and then a line at the bottom. And you can see now why it's important to make sure that your Mod Podge is really dry before you start doing yours, because if it's not, um, you don't want the hot glue to pull your, your tissue paper away from the bag. You know, you, you wanna make sure it's nice and nice and sturdy and everything is adhering really well where you want it to and when you want it to. <laughs> okay, so another line down the middle and at the bottom. And you can really make this as big as you want. Like you can make it smaller or larger. Um, yeah, there's so many different ways to do this. You can use brown paper bags. That'd be really pretty for like Christmas, like put lights in it or something. So my line in the middle and my line at the bottom. So another great question from Rachel. She wants to know what paint will we use if we wanted to Mod Podge an outdoor table. So we love using um, Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint. For some of our outdoor furniture, it's multi-surface. Um, we like to use Folk Art multi-surface paint. Um, that is great and it withstands the outdoor really well. But if you're gonna seal your uh, finished piece with Mod Podge, we would recommend using Mod Podge Outdoor. Yes, there is a Mod Podge Outdoor. And then it doesn't even really matter or what kind of paint you use because the Mod Podge on top is gonna seal that paint in and, with, and, and help it withstand the outdoor elements. Yeah, awesome. 
Um, okay, guys, so I'm all, again, I'm only using six. You might want to use more if you want a bigger star. Um, but I've got them all together. I've got my glued stack, all of them are together. Um, so now I'm going to take my scissors and at the top, I'm just going to cut my top into a point. So you can kind of make it as sharp as you want. Just make sure that it's, it's even on both sides. I'm going to cut through my whole stack. So if you have like a really big stack, sometimes you might want to just like kind of finagle it and like cut through a few at a time. Um, but if you've got some nice sharp scissors, it shouldn't be an issue. So I'm just cutting into a point. And that's what's going to make that pointy, pretty star shape. So I'm cutting at a point. So this is what it looks like. You can also cut more in here. We're kind of like getting like paper snowflake vibes now. So you can cut it here if you want. I'll show you how to do that. So I can cut a little, little notches in. And you can kind of see now behind me how this might be affecting your star um, when you pull it, when you connect it and open it up. So I'm cutting just little little cutouts here, just giving it a little bit more detail, just carefully. Okay, oops. All right, so you can see here now, um, it's not terribly even, but once you pull it open, it won't matter, don't worry. So I've cut the top, I've cut these little notches out, and now is where the magic happens. Now you're gonna see how stinking easy it was to make this paper star, and it's gonna look so impressive when people see it. I made it here and everybody was like, Oh my God, how did you do that? Like, did it take you hours to fold? And I was like, no, not at all. It's so easy. Okay, so now you're gonna put it on its side and we're gonna get some accordion action. You're gonna take either side carefully and we're gonna open it up. You guys, look how easy that was. So my Mod Podge wasn't totally dry, so it's wanting to stick a little. So just make sure that yours is nice and dry. But we are gonna open it all the way up. And again, you can see why more bags might be better. You're gonna open it all the way up and maybe do more bags than me. And you're gonna uh, uh, adhere these two together. So mine's not wanting to open super well because I didn't use enough bags. I was rushing for you guys. Um, but you would take these two ends and you, I don't wanna stretch it because mine will break. Yours will be bigger. And you would hot glue these together just like we hot glue together the rest. And you have this beautiful paper star. Like look how easy that was. So you can see here behind me, um, I did a smaller one, and I did a larger one. It depends on how big your bags are, but it was so, so super easy to do. And imagine all the different colors. Like you can see, I had all of my bags, um, all my bags done here. So it's beautiful colors all the way around, these beautiful pinwheels. But just like imagine these hanging over your summer tables with your matching candlesticks and all of your little tea lights and your matching um, play settings. Like, oh, it's just so, so, so fun. So. Um, so yeah, that's it. Look at all the amazing things you can do with Mod Podge um, for, for your table decor. Do you have any more questions, Em? Um, Cynthia had a good question. What would you use to hang these? Okay, great question. So the ones behind me here, I put um, just some fishing line. I just punched a hole in one of these here. So I would take it, oops, I dropped the handle. Um, I would punch a, like take a hole punch or something. And I would just hole punch it there. So you can kind of see, I would take one and hole punch it there. And then I just tied some fishing line and they're pretty light because it's all paper. So just some fishing line. And on here, I have some of those command hooks. So if you're gonna hang it on a wall, that works. But you can hang it from your trees. You can hang it from like your chandelier in your home, like your light fixture, you know, there's lots of different ways to hang it. But yeah, just some fishing line is what I did. Great. And since we're kind of on the topic of like uh, outdoor dinner parties and outdoor crafts, I just wanted to remind everyone again, the two Mod Podges that we really recommend for outdoor usage is of course Mod Podge Outdoor and Mod Podge Ultra. And I listed those two links in the chat, but um, I just want to remind you guys that those two are available at Michael's in-store and online. Yes, great point. Like these, I didn't really make these like withstand elements, of course. These are, are kind of ones you would bring inside after you're done with your Totally. Party. Yeah, yeah. But that's a great point. Using Mod Podge Outdoor and you could keep these candles out and stuff. That's a really good idea. But I would bring all the paper stuff in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Happy Mod Podge Month. We're having so much fun celebrating in the Michael Community Classroom. Um, if you guys decide to make any of these projects, please hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag plaid crafts. We love to see what you guys are doing. Um, we will be back here next week, same time to do some really uh, super fun sort of like throwback Mod Podge paper beads. So I'm sure you guys have all done it before, but Kira Ballantyne will be here in the studio to show you guys how to make some, um, you know, kind of bring it into the future and make them like cute and modern for today. So that's gonna be a really fun class. Again, same time next week. And we're also here every Monday night in the Michael Smitty classroom, uh, classrooms to teach a paint night. So every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, we teach a beginner painting class. So if you've never painted before or if you've been painting for a long time, 
we just have so much fun. It's great for everyone. So it takes about an hour to paint the painting. We teach how to paint the full painting, um, but we have a blast. So again, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, again, right here on the Michaels, uh, michaels.com page. And I think that's it. Thanks, everybody. We had so much fun. See you next Bye. time. Bye.